Welcome to Every Day is a New Day. Kim O'Neill from KimO'NeillCoaching.com. We are live. And let's say, say hello to our viewers. So hello, Joe. So good to see you here again. And... If you are here with us live, do go ahead and let us know where you're watching from. Thank you for being here. We got started a little late today, but it's always perfect <laughs> timing. <laughs> it's, okay. <A> little. <laughs> it's okay, it's all good. So I'm gonna formally start the show now. So one, two, three. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Every Day is a New Day, where I have amazing conversations with awesome guests about moving forward and choosing to embrace a positive outlook. My name is Kim O'Neill. I am your host for today. I'm also a personal empowerment and interview confidence coach. And if you'd like to find out more about how I can support you in gaining more confidence in your personal and professional life, making sense of the chaos in your head so you can see more confidently in your power, then I invite you to contact me over at KimO'NeillCoaching.com and we can see how we, I can support you in that. If you are watching us live, that means you found us on Facebook at Kim O'Neill Coaching or on one of the pages this has been shared out to. And if you're watching the replay, you found us on Facebook or over on BingeNetworks.tv on the Every Day is a New Day channel. Either way, we're so happy to have you here. Do please like, comment, share, let us know where you're watching from because we'd love to interact with you. And with that said, I want to welcome today's guest, Sharon Lynn Wyeth. Hello, Sharon. Hi, uh, Kim. Nice to be with you again. I'm glad we finally got this going. <laughs> Same here. I know it's, you know what, it's, this is just, this is the way it was supposed to be. This feels good and I'm glad we made it work and so happy to see our, our guests that are live with us. Sharon, this is, this is not her first time being here. This is her second time being here because this is a unique kind of uh, episode today. What Sharon shares is exciting stuff. She does name analysis and Sharon, I, so I'm actually, I'm not gonna read your bio. We did that in the first episode and if someone would like to go back and find out um, you know, what we spoke about in the first episode, then you can go, go ahead and do that on bingenetworks.tv or on YouTube. But in your words, Sharon, tell us what you do. I interpret names. I can tell you from the placement of the letters in your name, uh, what kind of gifts you like, what your learning style is, what your personality is like, um, how you think, feel, and behave, how what your strengths are, what your challenges are in this life, um, what your soul wants versus what your personality wants. Um, the new book on the health will be coming out in 2019 in January. So by then I'll have it all memorized too on, on your health predispositions because now I've only got part of it memorized. And Anyway, there's so many things in a name and you can compare two names and you can see where the potential conflicts are. Wow. And how it would go, or if you wanna take his last name or not, what that would do to your environment because the first name is the essence of who you are. The middle name is where you go under stress if you have a middle name and your last name is your environmental influence. And how does how does that make a difference if you know, you're know you using a, a married name versus your birth name? How does you know, how does well, that your influence changes because now you're listening to different people. So your whatever last name it, you're using always indicates what kind of people you're drawing to you and what they would like you to be or how which way they're guiding you and where they're asking you to go. Now, I remember something that really stood out last time I spoke with you is you shared that if you have and of course, correct me if I have this off a little bit, but you said something about if you have three L's in a name that that could be an indication of health issues or something of that sort. That can be an indication of being misdiagnosed by an allopathic doctor. Oh, so interesting. you always want to double check before you let a doctor give you pills or, or do an invasive surgery or something. You want to check with two, three, four other people and see if that's really necessary, if that is the right prognosis for what you've got because they could have diagnosed you wrong and you can pay for it for the rest of your life because of the damage that's done then to the body. And so if somebody has three L's, if you just count, you put out your entire name, you count all your L's. If you have three or more, I always say go naturopathic. Uh, allopathic's great for broken bones. Other than that, go naturopathic okay. and, and protect yourself. Well, and I had to ask that because I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me during our last interview that, oh my goodness, I have three L's in my name. <laughs> L is not my, the name I was born with. It is a family name, but th that's, 
It's not my, once you're wearing that name, that pulls into play. Yeah. So like when my married name, I had three L's, I did not have it in my birth name. And all the stuff that came with three L's, because other stuff comes with it also, all came after seven years of having three L's. And then the minute I didn't have that last name anymore that gave me that extra L, it was like, oh, all that stuff's going away again. Oh, how nice. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, okay, so we're already talking and okay, I love it. We're seeing the comments in here. Okay, so let's, let's Sharon, let's take a look at the comments. How about that? <laughs> All right, we've got Anne with us. I'm glad you found us, Anne, awesome. And Anne says she's ready to buy your new book. So interested and she loved your previous two. Well, thank you, appreciate that. I'm putting it out there to help people. That's my whole goal. You know, so many things in life take so much time, like really getting to know somebody. It really takes time. And yet so much of our life is so instant. We have credit cards for instant access to something. You know, so many things are so instant and we're impatient anymore because of that. And so this is a way to really get to know somebody at a very deep level very quickly. In fact, when I get through riding next to a plane to most people, if I'm riding coach, because in first class they don't talk to each other, but in, in a coach, you know, they, they're saying, oh, you so get me. I want you to be my new BFF. And I think, yeah, that's just a short plane hop, you know. <laughs> but it's because you understand them, because you can interpret their name. It's really kind of exciting. Oh, that's so awesome. Okay, and so we've also got Joe saying that she saw you the first time, just got a book for her birthday. But you said something about my son, that he was special 3%. Um, I remember that. That was pretty powerful. Um, you were able to hone in on a lot of things that Joe ended up sharing with us about her son. Uh, and she's sharing here again, my son is Elisha Joseph Hole Allen. You planted the idea of EBV. I am researching it now, but he has spinal condition. Okay. I don't know much about that, Sharon. Is, is, are there any? Uh, Epstein virus. Okay, that's right. Okay. Um, Very excited to get the new book. Awesome. You know, um, it's surprising to me it's kind of like I'll get a wave of clients and they all, I'm reading them and I go, wow, you've got Epstein virus and you've got Epstein virus. And it's like, oh, this is Epstein virus week or something, you know? And then, and then, you know, the next week it's like, it, it's like they come in rolls and, and then it's like, oh, we've got immunization problems. Oh, and you've got immunization problems or whatnot. And it just seems to validate the research I'm doing on what causes what. You know, and, and people yeah, are so gracious to say, oh, yes, and then whatever, you know, to validate. Yeah. Well, that is wonderful, Joe. Joe, I'm glad that was helpful for you. Um, I, Sharon, I'm wondering what, you know, what do you make of people who say that they've never felt like the name they were given at birth? Well, I think a, there's a lot of people that may feel that way because of the sound of it or because they don't really understand what it says. And the majority of times when people have a session and they think they want to change their name and I say, well, first, let's really know what your name is saying. And then if you want to change it, absolutely happy to have you change it to something that feels right. You know, and then what do you want it to be? You know, right. type. And when I say, what do you want it to be? It's not to give me a name. It's to give me what are the 10 things you want people to know about you right away? What are 10 things you want in the people that you attract to you? And I've got to look at the birth name to make sure that we're not changing why the soul is here so that we still have that. And then I put all that information together and I come up with all kinds of possible names that will satisfy all those conditions. And then we go through them, which one sounds good, which one, whatever. And then when we wipe out the ones that don't even sound attractive to a person, then we look at what else is going to come with this name other than the 20 things you've given me and keeping your soul purpose the same. I yeah. love I love that you said that. And as you were talking about that, I started thinking about even street names. I know my mom, whenever she, my mom has moved a lot. And whenever she is picking out where she's going to go to next, she always is like, mm, not that place. Cause I don't like the street name, but I like this one. Well, the, the house number will tell you what the focus is going to be for the people that are living in that house during that time period. And the street name tells you what your neighbors are going to be like. So if you don't like that street name, it's like, eh, I'm not going to really like the neighbors on this street. Maybe I ought to try a different street. So I have a lot of people that call me also and say, I'm thinking of investing in a house. I'm thinking of buying a house. And I go, okay, your, this address would say, this is what you're working on. This is what your neighbors are going to be like. This is what the city government's going to be like. because That sits in the city name. 
you know, oh <laughs> and then this is what the state government's going to be like because that sits in the state name. And then I say, I just give the information and then they go, well, should I move here or not? And I go, well, this is how that corresponds to your name. You decide if that sounds good or doesn't sound good. I look at it as my job to give the information. It's your job to make the decision. Right. Oh my gosh, it's so just so exciting. So if you have questions about a specific name, do go ahead and put it in the comments and we will definitely be taking a look at that. But before we get to that, Sharon, I'm curious, are there some you know simple tips that you can share with us right now to help people, you know, right now to be able to go, okay, here's why you okay. know me and my partner are having so, a conflict. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so let's do two things. First of all, we we're just talking about addresses. So mm -hmm. let's look at the number of your address because that affects who lives in the house. Okay. Okay. So how you find it, let's say your house number is 4026, just for an example. Okay. Then you would add the four plus the zero. You still have four plus okay. the two is six plus six more is 12. So there's still two digits. You need to get it down to one digit. So one plus two is three. Okay. So you're adding all the digits of the original. And then you, if it's a two digit number for your answer, you add those two digits and you get your final one. Okay. okay. So depending on your final number, if it's a one, it's a great place for new beginnings. Now I got this from the feng shui when I lived in China and this is what they believed. Okay. So that's where the numbers are coming from because okay. I just do words or names. Okay. So one is, it's a great place for new beginnings. So if you're starting a new business, if you're starting a new relationship, if you're starting something new, you're, you're moving to a new location and you know, it's a new environment, whatever. A one is a great number for that. It supports it. If you have your house number and it adds up to a two, then the whole time you're living in that house, you're going to be working on relationships. How are my relationships going? Are they positive? Are they negative? Do I still want this relationship? Is it taking advantage of me? Is it an even give and take? Or is, uh, do I just feel like I'm being used all the time? Or, you know, am I constantly giving? Okay. So it's all about working out the rough patches in relationships and focused on relationships. Okay. If you're in a house for a number three, that's where I live in a number three house. That's the party house. That's where everybody comes and has a good time and it works for everybody that comes there. So okay. I hold a lot of my workshops in my house because everybody goes, oh, it's like living in a tree house. And I think, yeah, I'm in a cabin in the woods, but it's a three and everybody likes it. Okay. That's so fun. anybody that's in a three and I grew up in a three house and this is the house where everybody, I had four siblings and everybody's friends, all of us all met at our house. Okay. okay? It's a party house. It's called the party house. Okay. Then there's the four house. The four house says that things are going to constantly go wrong while you're in that house. The plumbing's going to need fixing. The wallpaper's going to start coming off. The, the lights are going to burn out. The, you just have constantly fix it up. And the house constantly needs attention and to be fixed. So it drains your finances because the, the house constantly has something wrong with it. Okay. Okay. So uh, if you're in China, uh, people won't buy four houses. Only the foreigners do that don't know anything. Okay, because the rest of them won't buy them. Okay, wow. so then you have a five house. A five house is constant change. Nothing stays the same. So like if you have a first vowel of a U in your first name, and so you like that constant change and constant differences, it's a perfect house for you because things constantly are changing. Nothing's static. Okay, if you're one of the people that like nice and calm and easygoing, you don't want a five house because in a five house, everything constantly is changing. You know, those are the people that also change the furniture all the time or, or whatever. <laughs> okay. okay. So then a six house, a six house, according to what I learned in China is the houses. And I've watched it happen now for years. The, um, the six house is the house that people go broke while they live there. They get all the financial challenges. So if it's not the house that needs attention, the business needs attention. Somebody that you love all of a sudden needs an operation, needs the money, whatever it is, it takes all your money. Okay. okay. I will tell you a story that <clears throat> I was helping somebody look for a house in Houston, Texas at one time. And this person loved this house. And he said, Oh, come look at this house because I always did his interior decorating for him. And he said, come look and see if you can, you know, figure this one out. And I went to the house and I said, you don't want this house. And he said, why not? And I said, it's a six house. And the people that live here, they're probably selling it because they went broke. And he goes, Oh, that's such nonsense. And I said, ask the realtor you know, why these people are selling. And so he said, okay, I will. So we went back to the relator and the relator told him the people had this really positive restaurant. They were doing so well. They opened a second restaurant. Well, they got tired of moving back and forth across town and the second restaurant needed more attention. So they bought this house to move to the close the second restaurant. Since they've moved into this house, the restaurant didn't do well. 
anyway, three later, three years later, they're broke. They need to go back to the first place and, and they sold this restaurant and they're going back to the first one. And I said, see, it's a six house. You don't want to live in a six house. Anyway, wow. I've heard more and more stories like that since then. Then a seven house is a spiritual house this is where you go that's your sanctuary that's your retreat it's not a good place people don't stop by it's not a good place for parties or a lot of company because that's your private space that's your sanctuary that's where you go it's peaceful it's calm and you want alone time people don't usually live in a seven house for a great number of years in a row because after a while you got to get back out in the world okay. and you can become a real recluse when you're living in a seven house but it's great for refreshing you or revitalizing you and just getting your act back together, especially if sadness is happening, you just need some private time. Okay, so that's a seven house. An eight house, Chinese love eight and nine houses because they both mean money. An eight house, you have a lot of money coming in, but it also says that you're working all the time. So what you hear about children that have grown up in an eight house, they say, yeah, we had money, but dad was always gone or mom was always gone. They were never here because they were always working. So yeah, you have money, but you're working long hours for it. Okay. And a nine house is the houses that are dressed to the nines. And those are the houses that um, you get the money and you have the time. It's reasonable. You get paid well for the job you're in. So you have balance. You have both time for play and time for work. So the nine houses, if you watch what's available on the real estate market, rarely come on the market. And when they do, they get snatched up right away because everybody loves living in a nine house. Oh my goodness. I want a nine now. Okay. <laughs> so as well, knowing all those things, I still pick the three. <laughs> well, you know, I, so as you were talking, I was like trying to do the math in my head about my own, you know, home and I'm a three, but I'm in an apartment. So how does that work? If okay, you've got an so apartment, it's number? not the, it's not the address of the place. It is the apartment number that you're looking at. Ah, okay. Okay. So if you're in an apartment, I'm so glad you asked that question, Kim. It's the apartment number you're looking at because that's your number and it's not the address of the, the entire facility. I'm in a four. You're in a four. So isn't it nice it's an apartment and you don't have to keep fixing it up with your pay because the owners have to keep fixing it up. Very interesting. Wow. 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 Okay. So, so for those who are just tuning in, we actually went into the direction of looking at street names and then Sharon, Sharon was also just sharing with us that the numbers on your, of your street, you know, how those can add to the meaning. And so we've got a couple here. We've got 86 green drive. Any thoughts about what, what the whole thing means? Yeah. What the whole thing means. Okay, so 86 Green Drive. So 8 plus 6 is 14 and 1 plus 4 is 5. So that's a 5 house where there's constant change. Okay, so people are coming and going. Visitors can drop in and leave. You know, there's always plans change. You think you got everything settled and then, oh, oops, it's not going to go quite that way. You know, it's just constant change. And the neighbors, the so that was for the number. And the neighbors with green would be that this is a, changing neighborhood are people moving in and out all the time is there not a lot of stability these are people that live in this street that like change i mean it goes right with her number that they they are influencers of change and they help people to change and adapt Ooh. because some people are comfortable with change and others are not and the people that live on this street are very comfortable with change in fact they need the constant variety and able to stay stimulated but they're also heart-centered because they feel what other people are going through. So they have a lot of empathy for the other people on their street. So I'd say that would be an exciting street to live on, especially if you wanted a constant excitement and, you know, and, and things of interest. And, but the neighbors have a great memory, according to this, which means don't dish any of them because they'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Very interesting. Um, so, and let us know how that resonates with you and your experience living there. And we've got another one here. We've got 8424 Westview Court. 8424 Westview Court. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at that. We've got to add the eight and the four to a 12 and 12 plus the six, which is the two and the four is 18. So that's a nine house. Okay. So that's one. So many people, when they buy a nine house, they just keep it forever. Okay. So, okay, so that's, it, those kind of houses want to be dressed to the nine. So take care of it, you know, put some color on it and decorate it beautifully because that makes the house happy and it just lasts longer. But then it's very interesting. It says that the people on the block can be very, very stubborn. Okay. You know, once they've made up their mind, 
that's it. You're not going to change their point of view, but that they're fairly smart people, but that it's going to take them longer to get to know because they will present one way, but they will really be a different way. So don't rely on first impressions. You're going to have to really get to know them because who they are is not who they present themselves to be. That's so interesting. Wow. Okay. So Anne, going back to Anne's of uh, Green Drive, she had said it's been stable for many years, but now it's turning over. So, okay. You know, and if a five people, if they don't move often, then watch inside their houses, they're moving the furniture. Okay. You know, okay. I joke about that because, um, when I move into a house, how because I was a military wife, we moved all the time. However, I put the furniture, that's how it stays until we totally pick up everything and move. It's like, how fast can I make it look like home? And then, you know, oh, right, right. Nothing yeah. moves, right? I, I just, oh, go ahead. So I was just gonna say, but there's friends of mine that I go and every time I visit them, their their furniture's rearranged. <laughs> Yeah, I know people like that too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the five energy. So if you don't want to move a house, you just move the furniture. <laughs> anyway, but, what do we do want to ask? Well, I'm just curious. Could it also be that um, maybe a person's not personally ready for change, but yet maybe there's something in their life where it's maybe time to start changing, and so that's how like the address is very fitting. But maybe there's like resistance sure, to it. Does that help them change? You know, and it could be that they're just changing a job. Right. Okay. You know, but there's going to be change because yeah. that's it. You know, it's in the it's in the letters of the street and it's in the you know what it's in the numbers. Of five. Okay. And green has a lot of change in it. Okay. When we went back to that one. Green's my favorite color, so I, <laughs> I've had to learn how to love change. So that's where that totally applies to me, by the way. Um, okay, wonderful. And Anne is saying she loves this, and I do too. So wonderful. Okay, so let's say, see, going back to actual people names, uh -huh. we've, we've got here, Anne was also putting hers out there, Anne McElway. And I know some people pronounce it Anne McElwee, and Anne, I've never actually clarified with you which way you pronounce it, so I apologize if I'm saying it the wrong way. But, Sharon, what's your analysis of, the, of her name? Well, you know, I can do, I can talk up to two hours on the name, so let me just give a quick summary. <laughs> sure. I mean, I had two hour appointments where I've got to talk for two hours on a name. Um, the quick summary is that she's a workaholic and, and she's like the energizer bunny in a way. She, she has a battery and it goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. And then all of a sudden the battery is dead and she just drops and says, okay, that's it for the day. She doesn't want to have to get up when she's down, you know, but in the meantime, everybody's going to think she's Miss Energizer because she's just going. And what really the motivation is she wants to finish whatever job she's working on. She wants to come to some kind of completion before she quits for the day you know, certain sections done or something's done. And so she's gonna keep going and work as long as possible until she can come to what she considers a nice stopping point. It says in her name that she has wonderful organizational styles that anybody could follow how she organizes things. And she's got a fabulous memory to go along with it. So I have said to different people, you know, you have a really good memory. And they've said to me, not really. You know, and I've looked at them and I said, that's just because you're not aware of everybody else's memory because you think what you're able to do, everybody else is able to do. So that's a bit in Anne's name too, is that she thinks what she can do, everybody can do. And I want to say, no, that's not true. <laughs> she has this incredible memory and she's got a very generous spirit. You know, it's like she has this big open heart and she wants to help other people. But when she's helping them, then she's not getting her own stuff done. And so when they get to go home at the end of the day, she's got to stay and finish her own stuff. You know, and then again, it's a good thing she's got a lot of energy so she can keep going and stuff. And the cure for that, by the way, because answers are always in the name besides the, the challenges or the gifts. Okay. And that is when somebody says to her, hey, Ann, can you help me with ABC? The answer is, I'd love to help you with ABC because Ann doesn't want to disappoint anybody. She goes, once I finish, finish XYZ. So then you watch what the person says next. If the person says, oh, okay, then I'll just see you later, that person is looking for anybody that's gonna come do their job for them. They don't need you in particular, they just wanna get out of doing the work. So at the end of the day, when you've never gone to help them, they go, hey, how come you didn't come help me with ABC? And you just shrug your shoulders and say, well, I haven't finished XYZ. You do that often enough, they'll find somebody else to go ask for help and they'll stop bugging you, okay? Wow. Because they don't give back either, those guys. On the other hand, 
If once you say, I would love to help you with ABC once I finish XYZ, and the person says, what can I do to help you with XYZ? They're literally saying, I'm gonna give back, I'm willing to do your work and help you, but I need you specifically and your knowledge to help me. Those are the people you wanna make the time for because when you need help later, they're the ones that are willing to give back. So wow. that's her name. That's amazing. And it looks like Anne was giving a lot of comments. And so it looks like this was resonating with her. She said, yes, tons of energy. And I also love that she said she's learned to say no. no. So you know, that's, yeah. And that's hard. That would be very hard for her. And that's why my suggestion is you say, I would love to do that once this is done because it's not a direct no, but then you get to watch who they are and if they're willing. And I always say, man, if they, if they volunteer to help you, take the help. Let them help you first and then go help them. Then you're both done at the end of the day. Oh, I so love that. And uh, okay, so I, I love, we've got more, we've got more stuff in the comments to analyze. So thank you, feel free to add more to that if you want us to take a, take a look at that. But Sharon, I know that you also teach people this stuff. Would you like to? I love to teach this to people. Um, I have one more class this year. It's in December. It's six days in a row, two and a half hours every day, and it's online. Okay. Okay. So you can go from anywhere in the world and you can say, okay, I'm going to join you for this two and a half hours for six days in a row. And honestly, that's 15 hours. You can learn the system in 15 hours. And people go, how do we do that? It took me 15 years to develop it and figure out all the patterns. So I think the difference in learning it in 15 hours is a pretty good ratio. But the, the reason we can do that is because I've had 40 years in education and being a teacher or an administrator or whatever. And so I know the shortcut ways, all the mnemonic devices, how to remember something. Like for an example, for everybody whose name out there begins with a C, the first name. So think of people you know whose name begins with a C. Okay. Okay, so I have a mnemonic device for everything. So the people whose name begins with a C, they are charming and charismatic to cover their need to be in charge and in control. Oh, I love that. Because they really want to be in charge and in control all the time because that's when they feel safe. And they can be so charming and charismatic that everybody says, okay, you can do it. And then you have to do it their way. <laughs> and that, that's very fitting for the person I was thinking of with the C. So that's great. Right. But I have a mnemonic device for everything. And it's a little story that goes with it so that it hits into the head. And I learned to use stories and mnemonic devices because I was a math teacher and I had to make sure that all my right brain people could still understand the math. That so, is so key, blend, finding a way to blend that creative stuff with the right brain structure stuff, you know, that's, that's so good. <laughs> right, so that's why literally so far, um, everybody who's taken the class can do it in the 15 hours with the exception of one. But when, before she took the class, I said, honey, you have nothing about memory in your name. You have nothing about what you need in your brain and able to really grab this. So if you're really willing to work hard, I'm willing to have you in class, but I need to tell you that up front because you're going to have to work doubly hard. Well, I let everybody retake the class as many times as they want to for $150 retake. Oh, wow. Okay. And so she came and took the class three times in a row and she's out there giving readings and she's fabulous and she's wonderful. And then I had an, a live class uh, just a month and a half ago. And the week after the live class, people were calling me and saying, we're giving readings and people are paying us and this is wonderful. And they're thrilled. And I literally, you know enough after one 15 hour class that you can start giving one hour readings. And then okay. I have a second level class if you want to learn what I do, how I work with the businesses. Wow. Okay, I love yes. this. I, I just remember the first time talking with you and how much I loved this. And so I just imagine our viewers are as well. And Joe is asking for the link. So where can they go to find out more about how to learn how to do this? Oh, know the name. Because oh. once you know the name, you know the person. So know the name .com. And know they just go to services and look for level one. Because that's how you start. And this is perfect timing, Kim, because if you want to take the class and you want to pay for it before October 31st, right now, um, we're giving a 40% discount off the price of the class if you pay for the December class by October 31st. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Super exciting. Okay. Woo. Um, okay. So I, before, before we get on to our, our guests' comments, I have to ask, what's, what's the mnemonic device for K? Oh, for K, they are leaders that lead for the good of the whole. So we call them the KKs. 
<laughs> because they they say, okay, okay, and they lead, and everybody benefits when Kay leads. So there are KKs. <laughs> I, I love that and thank you. I, I like to think yes, that's what I'm doing. So <laughs> yeah, okay. when they do, like when the C leads, I love the C's because they don't make very many mistakes. You know, they're very hard on themselves and they really are kind of perfectionist in their own way. And and but they have a hard time admitting when they make a mistake because they don't do it very often. They don't get enough practice admitting that they made the mistake. Anyway, um, so but the C's lead because that's how they learn. But when the K's lead, everybody benefits because the K's can't lead unless they know that everybody's gaining just as much as they are. So I love seeing a K lead. Oh, I love it, I love it, love it. Okay, well, so are you ready for some more sure. game analysis? Okay, <laughs> so let's see here. I know I saw some stuff down here. Okay, we've got another address. Okay. We've got 97 Benedict Street. Well, you know, I think from all of the traders that have been named Benedict, that's kind of a, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just joking. But anyway, um, in the street name, it says your neighbors are not always emotionally the most sound people. It does say that they can have emotional ups and downs. And sometimes you'll think this person is very sane. And other times you might think, wow, I got the craziest neighbors on the block. Okay. And it's a retreat. It's a sanctuary house. It's like when you go in, you don't care if you know the neighbors or not, because you're not going to really deal with them. You're going to go in there and that's your sanctuary and you're going to stay in the house. It's like, you're not going to necessarily be very gregarious and outgoing and meaty than all your neighbors. So it doesn't matter if they're a bit crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Susan, let us know if that resonates with you, how that resonates with you. Awesome. Okay. And let's see here. We have, I think I saw some additional, I saw another name in here. Feel free to keep putting them in the comments. Okay, we've got a name here, Joshua Theodore Allen. Okay, so I'm writing things down. I'm a such a visual learner. Okay, and how did he spell Allen? Because you're looking it, at the A-L-L-E-N. Yes, yeah, so, oh, sorry, A-L-L-E-N. Got it. Oh, thank you, Joe. It's right up there in front where I can see it nice and easy. Thank you so okay. much. Um, people with a first vowel of an I, by, I mean an A, by the way, are such visual learners that it's very helpful if you give us things in writing where, um, you know, different vowels have different things like a, an E and an, you know, they're very kinesthetic. They have to be doing something and able to learn it. And all that information, by the way, on the first vowels is I've written an article on the website and you get it for free. And I'm, my book goes into print this Saturday. That's an extended version of the second chapter of know the name, know the person, because wow. it really extends. How do you communicate? How do you start conversations? What is it really important to know? What else do you know all about the first vowels? And it goes into print on Saturday. And so by sometime in November, hopefully as soon as possible, it will literally be free. It's my gift back to the world. Um, let's communicate with each other better. And if we just understand the first vowel and the first name, wow. and we understand how those people need, like with an eye for you, it's like you always need to be included. It's very important that we include you. If we're all going bowling and you hate to bowl, you still want us to ask you so that you know you were included, even though you're gonna tell us no thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it, it just little things like that. You know, how do you improve your relationships? And so I made a 64 page book so that it's not overwhelming, but it gives you the information you need so that you can make better connections. And literally it's gonna be free on my website because that's my contribution back to society. So anyway, it goes to the printers on, um, which is nice, it goes to the printers on Saturday. That's very so, exciting, what a wonderful gift. You know, well, I'm just so wanting people to understand this and how it can just enrich their lives. And if they just know communication styles, you know, because we all hear something a little differently. But yeah. I, in the book, I give the communication style, the learning style, how they like their gifts, their love language, because it all sits in that same vowel. You know, how do you show your love? How do you know your love? How do you, what has to happen so that you feel love? And because that's what has to happen for you to feel love, that's how you show love. But if you're not showing love the same way somebody else understands that they're feeling love, then they could not feel loved even though they are. So yeah. if you learn how each letter feels love, then you know how to also show your love. For an example, my first vowel of an A shows the love by, you've got work to do, I'll pitch in and help you with your work so you get done sooner so you can sit sooner. 
You know, that's my way of saying, I love you. I'm giving you my time and energy to help you with your work. Okay. And that's okay. the, that's the, I love you. But now with the first vowel of an E that I love you is touch. So they want to be touched. They want to be hugged. They want to be kissed. They want to be, you know, you walk by and you pat them on the back or something. They need that physical touch to feel loved. And if they're not getting physical touch, then they think, man, that person doesn't love me. They don't want to even touch me. You know, so it's, it's, it's all of them are different. So that's all in that freebie book that's coming out. It's like, how do we do this? How do we connect? Because I, I was just talking with a really good friend earlier today. And I was, I was saying to him, you know, communication is so vital. And if you look at my friends that I still have from high school, mm -hmm. you know, even though we've been out of high school umpteen years now, 50, <laughs> almost 50 years. And if you're looking at that, and I said, you know, I'm looking at my long-term friends, which I have, uh, I'm so lucky that I have so many long-term friends. And I said, you know, with so many of them, I can count on one hand, like with like my friend Cynthia, I've, I've only had one disagreement with her in the entire time when we met when we were 13. And, yeah. you know, and I look at that and I think, and I was wrong. She was right. She called me on something. And when I saw it from her point of view, I said, this will never happen again. I was wrong. You were right to call me on it. And I am so sorry. And that was the whole extent of the argument, you know, and wow. with the death rate one that we've been friends since we were 14, we've had three disagreements in all that time. You know, and I look at that and I think you can have peaceful relationships, you know, and yeah. some of my friends have said, wow, you know, I go through friendships really fast, but you, you're always there. You know, I, I don't go, you know, your friendship lasts. And so then they start saying, what are you doing differently, you know, than my other friends? And I think a lot of it lies in just knowing the communication style of somebody. I agree. And that's why I want to get that out. And that's why I'm willing to give it away for free. So just think you can get it for free and you can give it as Christmas gifts, not an expensive gift. <laughs> oh, that's such a great idea. Wonderful. Well, okay. Well, it's going back to Susan, she said that uh, your analysis of her address was true. So um, that is awesome, Susan. Thank you for sharing that with us. And she also said that it is a sanctuary home and she does have a crazy neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how they work. But that's why people call me and say, do I want to invest in this house or not? Well, let me tell you what it would be like. Is that attractive to you? Invest if it's not. Go for something else, you know. <laughs> and you know what, Sharon? It, you know what? You're, it, no, it looks like um, the name bar is over your face. It looks like everything shifted. A there we go. I just want to okay, make sure we're good again. Yeah, you're good again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> just noticed that. I hope I don't know how long it was like that. Um, okay. And Anne is just saying your book is spot on. I know she shared with me that she actually purchased some of your books. And I think gave it away as gifts and they loved it. Ah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, let me ask you, I don't, I didn't see any other names in the, uh, in the search field. Let me ask you a question. <sighs> Okay, so I've always loved names that start with J, but I think you I had love the names start with J. Okay, telling me more about that because I, I would love to know more about J names. Well, I have already said up to the spirit world that if there, if reincarnation exists, I'm already putting in my order for next lifetime's name now that I understand names. So I want to come down with this name next time, <laughs> and and the name will start with a J. <laughs> that's so I funny. thought that's a good one. The J's are very intuitive, but they need to learn to be comfortable with their intuition. And they are just brilliant. When you talk about the road less traveled, that's what the J's do. And they lead the rest of us and create new pathways for the rest of us to follow. They are just brilliant. And you can ask a J a question. And even if they knew nothing about that question before you asked, it's like they download the answer and then womp, here comes a, a very viable, well thought out answer. And you think, wow, how long have you been studying this? And they go, I didn't even know I knew the answer till I answered. I mean, it's just, they're brilliant people that start with a J. And, stuff. Think, and it yeah. also, names that start with a J, there's just a few letters in certain placements that say, it's easy for you to become a millionaire. And first letter of a J is one of them. So it's like, hello, that's why I said, that's it, intuition, smarts, good money. Give me a J next time. <laughs> Sheesh. That's very, that's very fitting for two people with J's that I was thinking of. Yes. They're so good at, at, at communicating and knowing things and sharing. And so it's and really they're street awesome. smart 
And one of the J's that I did this with, I said, I said, you know, you're really street smart. And he goes, I take that as an insult. And I said, not me, man. In our world, in our culture, being street smart is a real advantage. You yeah. know? Oh, yeah. But Absolutely. he thought maybe I was talking about like gangs or something like that. And I thought, no, that's not what street smart. That means there's it the communication means, thing again, right? People right. interpreting things differently. Yeah. Right. But it was like, no, that means you just figure out how things work and how you need to do it. And Oh, I love the J names. So, okay. So what about a person who has, who has like say five first names? Um, I don't, I don't know that we see that that all that common here in America, but I know in other places where they just like kind of keep adding on names. Um, what, what, well, you only have one first name and all the rest are second, third, fourth, or fifth. They got to come in some kind of an order. My okay. grandmother had eight names. She came from Germany and they had to have a name that represented all the relatives. So she had eight names. Okay. Well, she had seven and then she got married to my grandpa and added the eighth for the last name. But anyway, okay. Um, so what you do is you treat the first name as the first name and then all the rest are middle names. And so those are intermittent qualities and characteristics. They'll show up sometimes, but they're not there all the time. And normally they show up when you go under stress. And so when you see somebody and all of a sudden they're like warped in a different person when stress hits them, you go, uh, hello, who are you? You know, I thought you were this kind of a person. That's because they're now utilizing the letters and the placement of their middle name. And that's when they're under stress, you know, and they'll become that person. However, sometimes your middle name is a stronger, more dynamic name than your first name. And those are the people that procrastinate because they procrastinate so they can get the best out of themselves by kicking into that middle name. Wow. And so again, the answers are in the name. So what I say to those people is, Give yourself a fake deadline, okay? <laughs> and then work really hard to meet that fake deadline. And then if you don't make it, you're still not stressing on your body because you still have time. But you'll put yourself under the stress to make that deadline, and therefore you'll still get the best out of you. But right. you don't have the physical effects of stress on the body, which can make some illnesses, because it was a fake deadline, not a real one. How and funny. your body understands that. Okay, what about, so I understand it's about the name that you go by, not necessarily the name you were given, but I'm just curious. So for instance, I was born Kimberly, but I, mm -hmm. I prefer to go by Kim. So even though Kim is my dominant, you know, the name that I use and however, whatever the meetings are in that, am I still impacted by the fact that my full name is technically Kimberly and occasionally I go by that, especially when I got to sign documents or something? Okay, so whatever is your birth name, is what is the blueprint for your life? What okay. your strengths are, what your gifts are, your timing. When are you gonna focus on what in your life? And when mm -hmm. what becomes important? All your timing comes in from that birth name, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, those give you all the strengths and the seven things that you come to learn. Every soul comes in with seven things and an umbrella, what I call the umbrella over the lifetime and then the wow. seven component parts to make that work. Okay. Okay, all of that's in the birth name. Now. When you're going by a name that's not your birth name, then you're saying, this is where my focus is. This is where my personality is. And so these are the parts of you I'm going to let me see, even though those other parts are running underneath. So for an example, Kimberly says, I need other people's approval. Oh, so you God. still need other people's approval, even though you're going by Kim. Oh. And it's not in Kim, but it is in Kimberly. <laughs> OK, so can you see how it still it still runs there? You just don't want it so obvious to everybody else that, hey, she needs other people's approval, guys. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, okay. well, yeah, well, and I just yeah, I, I will not deny that. Yes, I have been aware how that plays into things and I, something I work on. But I know a lot of us deal with that, too. So I think it's well, um, anybody whose name ends in Y deals with that. Wow. OK, because that's where that sits. Now, remember the answers are always in the name? Yeah. So how do you learn how not to need somebody else's approval? Be more well, comfortable answer, with yourself. That's why I said that's what I would say. Go ahead. It, it looks at learn how to give yourself approval. Yeah, right. And it's not even being comfortable with yourself because you can still go, oh gosh, I really screwed up on that one. But it's learning how to evaluate honestly who you are, where your strengths are, and then give yourself the approval so that you're not needing to seek it from somebody else. And there's always a balance. 
If we could be little islands, we wouldn't learn. We would not accomplish what our name has to say. And yet, if we give everything away and only listen to others, we're not going to accomplish. It's a really nice balance. It's like you're the car the carbon, okay? And that other people polish it and help you become the diamond. Oh, I love that. That is awesome. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Okay, let's. So we we've, we've got a little bit of time left, and we've got a couple more names in the chat. So, what about the name Susan Jean Bradley? Okay, so she's got a great sense of humor. Yes, she does. Okay, <laughs> got a great sense of humor. Wants to make the world a better place. Is really smart. She can learn anything if she puts her mind to it. She just has such a short attention span. You got to teach her fast. <laughs> And, but she'll catch on fast. But if you go too slowly, she's bored and she's off somewhere else or she's daydreaming. Okay. And if she's learning something new, she wants the teacher sitting right here. She has no patience to wait for an answer. You know, she wants the teacher right here to be able to answer her. But the minute she's got the foundation and she kind of understands what's going on, she thinks she's got it. Then it's like, don't micromanage me. Don't look over my shoulder too closely. Go away. I don't need you anymore. Thank you very much. But get out of here. <laughs> Okay. And it's like that transition is not always smooth between I need you right here and, and now I don't want you. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, but she only wants to do as much work as she has to, you know, whatever the job entails to her quality standard, she'll get it done, but she's not going to put in extra because who's going to notice anyway. Right. And besides right. that, she needs to have a life outside of work. So she's all about having balance in her world between playtime and work time. And she'll get the work done a whole lot more if it's fun. She's got to make work fun. Okay. And she's a big picture gal. So she sees the big picture of things and she's able to see the details, which is very rare to be able to do both with equal. But she's got equal talents in both saying, here's the big picture that we need. And here's all the details we need to do and able to get that big picture accomplished. So um, she is, she pulls good people to her you know, ethical people to her, competent people to her, you know, she's like, I want to say she'd be like a Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill said, if you're really, really smart, you pull smarter people to you because those are your advisors. And Susan's able to do that too. She just brings the right people to her all the time. Susan, let us know how that resonates with you. Based on what I know of Susan, it sounds very fitting. So uh, that was that was amazing. Awesome, awesome. And was there anything else you wanted to add to the Joshua Theodore Allen? Joe was asking about that name again. I think you already said some things. Did, was there anything else um, that you wanted to say about that name? Just looking for it again here. Where was that? Joshua Theodore Allen. Um, with, with Joshua, um, it's really interesting. You know, I'm very prejudiced with that name because I named my son Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> but it also means that they were very a challenge to rear. Uh, every Joshua is a real challenge to rear. And, and part of it is because they listen and then they go do what they want to do anyway. So you think, why did I waste my breath? But they really do listen. <laughs> and then they decide. Okay, so for an example, suppose you had Joshua in a bubble bath and he doesn't like to to put his head underneath the sink type of thing, okay? But he's in a bubble bath and you say, okay, it's time to get out. And he wants to duck his head, right? There's nothing you're gonna do that stops that kid from ducking his head. So instead you say to him, if you duck your head, one, you're gonna get soap in your hair and then I'm gonna have to put your head underneath the faucet and rinse it out, which you don't like. And two, if you open your eyes when you duck your head, soap can sting eyes. It doesn't every time, but it does the majority of the time. So you might want to consider that before you duck your head because you already know they're going to do it anyway. OK, so anyway, when I did that with my son, he ducked his head. And for the first time, he didn't yell and scream and give me a bad time when I put his head underneath the faucet because he knew, hey, that's part of the consequence of my choice. OK, and he looked at me, he says, I chose not to open my eyes. So how you rear a Joshua, they're just brilliant and they can be so obstinate sometimes and so obnoxious at other times because they're so much smarter than everybody else that they have no patience for stupidity. So they become obnoxious. So what you do is you simply say, here's the consequences, possible consequences of the choice that you're making. So you may want to consider those while you're making your decision. You know, but really interesting. Joshua's are very challenging to rear. But once they hit about 28, they become the biggest sweethearts that ever was. It's like all that hard work and rearing your Joshua 
pays off and they become the most gracious, loving, considerate, oh my God, fabulous men and men in, in what they're doing. So, so that's good. And with his, with his middle name, know that periodically your Joshua can have a temper. And it's because when he gets emotionally frustrated and he doesn't have the words to describe his emotional feelings, you're going to see him come out with it with a temper. So help him with the words, you know, say, are you mad? Are you sad? Are you glad? Are you, you know, help him find the right words because once he can identify his feelings with words, he can dissipate the feeling and handle it. It's so interesting how some people, you know, they don't have practice communicating their feelings and it's, it can be really exhausting and daunting for them to, you know, enter into a conversation like that. I remember years ago I was with someone and to me it was just very second nature to, to let's talk about what's going on in our relationship. And, and he would physically get tired. <laughs> yes. It was just like draining to, and we would just started the conversation. It's not like we've been talking about it. <laughs> Why is he like, you know, like really, you could see it. He's just getting tired. So that was something I had to learn. But um, so that sounds really awesome to be able to help them find those words and, you know, facilitate right, because that once you can identify it, which is where they're struggling, then they're okay with it. They've named it. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, awesome. Okay. Well, I didn't see any other new names in here. Oh, we've got. Now, having your last name would help me, but anyway, Elizabeth is one of the strongest female names out there. It means her, I, I can tell got, you her last name is Acar, so it's it's Liz Acar. Thank you, Elizabeth um, and Acar. Yeah. So, so you have enough self confidence. You have enough belief in self. You have good communication. You have um, you have independence. You can hold your own. You're not getting swayed by other people so that you know that you're going this way or that way. I mean, you have a direction and you go after it. Um, you can confront people when you need to. Confrontation is is comfortable for you. Some people shy away or go, you know, when they have to confront and you just come right out with it. Go, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, um, you've got this incredibly strong name. You've got a good worth work ethic. You want to make the world a better place. You just, the only challenge in your name, really, the, the biggest challenge, we all have seven challenges, but the, none of yours are that big or hairy or disastrous or whatever. The, the largest one I'm looking at your name is, is watching the emotions so that they don't take you off kilter at times because you're so sensitive to the ones you care about that they can do something or say something and it can throw you off kilter and then your emotions are like, everywhere you know they kind of get unstable so that's your biggest challenge is to keep those emotions at a nice stable pace and it's it's not to say don't feel happy or sad or whatever it's just to say don't let the feelings overwhelm you where your thinking stops wow so liz let us know how that resonates with you Good, strong name wow he's a natural leader awesome Sharon, I just absolutely love talking to you. And I know I've already said that like a few times, but um, you're so fun. And Liz is commenting that, yes, that emotional part resonated with her. So good to know. It, Sharon, I know you talked a lot about, you know, really wanting to help people um, communicate more with each other. And I'm just wondering, you know, what's the legacy you want to live? You put so much of your effort into analyzing names and now putting it into written form and you're, you're creating this free book that people are going to be able to download soon. You know, what's the legacy you want to leave? Well, I have done so many things in education because I was involved in education for 40 years. Like I was the one responsible for bringing dual high school and college credit classes to the entire state of Texas. My school was first and everybody else came and copied and then it expanded and grew. And we never get credit for what we do. It goes to our principal. I was an underling. I was an academic dean. So the credit went to my principal and my, and my superintendent, you know? And so I look at, five significant things that I have contributed to education in the state of Texas and everybody else got credit. And it was a wonderful thing in a way because it taught me to see the results of your work or your ideas is so much more important than somebody saying, wow, look what you did. It's like, who cares who did it? Look at the results. Look at how many people it's helping. Look at how it's making the world a better place for so many. Okay. 
So I look at that and, and it was great because I had to deal with my own sense of self and, and how I felt about things. And, and during that time period, I was in my thirties. So it was nice and young. And, and I really learned that it, it doesn't matter who gets credit. It matters that something positive got added to the world. And so I feel that same way about nameology science. When I'm long gone, nobody's going to remember my name. And besides that, I won't be that person anymore. I will have moved on. And, and the legacy that I'm living behind is a system that is so quick, so easy to learn, so efficient that, I mean, if you're going to learn astrology, you need to know information about the other person. You need their cooperation. If you're going to do numerology, you need their, their birthday. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that you need their participation with and able to really get to know who that person is. And with nameology, the minute they've introduced themselves, you're off and running. And I will often say, uh, and how do you spell that? Because there's so many different ways. And as they're spelling, I'm analyzing. And I know who I'm talking with by the time they're done, you know, spelling their name. And, and it's such a way of getting to see where everyone is so that you can so appreciate their hardships and what they came to learn and what their gifts are. So nobody's an underdog. Nobody's on a pedestal. Because you get to see the whole picture, the whole package. And so my legacy will simply be, you know, that in God's eyes, I came, I contributed, and I left. Oh. And I did what I could. That's it. And it's only important to me what's there in God's eyes. So if my name stays, doesn't stay, who cares? God will know I did my best. Sounds like you've mastered detaching from and needing to be a certain way. And you're, I, I love how you put that. that that's great with age, you know. <laughs> You get it with age, hopefully. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, you thank know? you so much for being here, Sharon. Let's, let's. I still have the name of your website here. So, for those who'd like to find out more about your, your the upcoming training and the forty percent discount if they register by October thirty first, is that correct? Right, and they can just write me, and they they can also write me, and that's info at knowthename.com. Okay. It's a really easy way to remember. And if you're at some place where you're not able, you don't have paper or pencil or whatnot, you can just say, oh, I need to remember the name. I need to know that name. And then go, oh, yeah, that was it. Know the name. <laughs> oh, that's, great. that's clever. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> See, the queen of mnemonic devices. This is why you can learn the whole system in 15 hours with me. Oh, and God. if that timing doesn't work for you, I have it on discs. Wow. So you can take it at your own pace. And the beauty, Kim, is that there is a year of follow-up that goes with every class where once a month you ask questions, you get to learn more. There is a year of follow-up where as you're learning the system, you can email us at any time and, and either Grace or myself, my assistant, myself, answer those questions because we want you to get it and we want you to get it right. We invest in you once you've invested in our program. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Sharon. I so love, you know, love speaking with you and just hearing all the analysis, even if it's a name that doesn't even apply to me or my life, right? It's just fun to like hear about all these unique things you pull out of every name. So thank you for doing this and gifting us with your, your knowledge and your time. Always my pleasure, Kim. You're a delight. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, and thank you to all those who've been here with us, whether you were here live or on the replay. It's been fun interacting with you. If you are watching the replay, do go ahead and still comment below. Sharon won't be able to answer, you know, all the name analysis questions right off the bat, but um, would certainly love to hear what you're taking away. And she gave so many nuggets and things that can be applied to, you know, different aspects of all sorts of names that I would love to hear what your takeaways are. And if you'd like to find out about future every Day is a new day show episodes coming up in 2018. Then on Facebook, go to at Kim O'Neill Coaching and click on the events tab and you'll see all the other guests that are currently scheduled. You can also find out about how I can support you in becoming more confident in your personal and professional life and making sense of the chaos in your head so you can stand more confidently in your power by visiting my website, KimO'NealCoaching.com. Thank you for being here. Remember that every day is always a new day day and isn't it fun to have a day like today where you get to extract all these <laughs> all these new fun you know tidbits about how to analyze a name which we all have and that right there just can help you feel you know th that fun and newness and playfulness in today so i hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time bye for now <laughs>